I here we go. Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the Mic Check podcast. I am, of course, your co-host, Mir Jasmine, and this is Claire McKenna. So, welcome to the pod. Today we got a theme. We're gonna do our best to stick to, but you know, we riff, we talk, we'll get off track. But today we're going to be attempting to focus on mental health, our personal experience, and just all about it in general. See where we go with it. You will, oh, okay. I'll start. So, okay, um, fair enough. <laughs> sorry, my throat's like kind of dying today. So, you can drop if you need to. Loki, I have I have a whole jar of Ricola throat drops from Switzerland, and every time I'm yeah, they're from Switzerland. Every time I talk about them, I always say they're from Switzerland because they seem fancy. That does seem a little bit fancier. Yeah. <laughs> They're, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I, so, um, we're literally already off topic and we're like two minutes in. Okay. Um, this is the pod. This is the pod. So, we both, I think, struggle with some anxiety, like, stuff. Um, and so I'm just like kind of always anxious all the time. But I think it's gotten better. I would say it's gotten better in like the past four months, probably. Um, And like that kind of comes with time, but also like learning yourself and learning how to like calm yourself down. Like I get a lot of panic attacks too, and it's also been about four months since my last one. And like, same, thank you. (laughs) Some tips. (laughs) (laughs) Some like, some tips that I picked up, which I think are helpful for other people to know is like, um to focus like on your breathing doing like breathe in for six out for four or vice versa and then doing um i'd like to count by odd numbers so i'll do like one three five seven nine eleven and so on until i get to 101 and then if i'm still like not calm down then i restart um that normally works for me another thing that was requested not requested suggested by, um, <laughs> did not mean to make that face, um, by our vocal coach, Allison, was, like, taking an ice-cold shower if you're at home. It kind not of, really. like, I've never that, like it kind of, like, jolts your body, so your mind is, like, whoa, like, I need to get out of this cold environment, so, and then it, like, gets your mind off of whatever you're, like, stressing out about, because, like, um, words like a lot of times like I feel like anxiety a lot like consumes your mind right like and you're not always sure what like you're not really sure what's causing it sometimes some like people have triggers obviously um but I think it comes with time too it's like learning what you can do for yourself and it's different for everybody right like I definitely relate to what you were talking about with like the cold shower getting your mind off of shit because for me, mm-hmm. what my biggest thing I always did was I just, as soon as I felt myself, like, sort of slipping into, like, an anxious or, like, a sad state of mind, I would just find something to distract myself immediately. Like, it's more yeah. of a temporary fix, really. It's not something that you can rely on completely in the long run. But in the moment, I would always just, you know, put on an album or, like, go play a video game or, like, FaceTime one of my buds, you know, watch a movie. Just anything to, like, put your mind on something else. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, I I remember one of my, I think probably my most intense panic attack ever was um, actually at, like, the place where we rehearse with our band Shakeout. And I was just, like, like, already had kind of, like, a stressful day, and then something just kind of put me over the edge, and then I, like, started a spiral, and it's that moment of, like, you're not quite sure what's going on, especially, like, like, I have them quite frequently, like, in the past, so, like, I, like, I know when it's about to happen, and then I'm, like, okay, like, hey, stop that, but, like, um, I'm, like, stop, Stop I'm, like, stop, please, (laughs) like, um, but for me, like, I, like, I noticed, like, the first thing is, like, I get really hot. Like, I'm, like, I need, if I have a sweatshirt on, I'm, like, immediately take that off. I'm, like, I try to get as cool as possible within a matter of moments. And then, um, it's, like, that 
like, I don't know if anybody else experiences this or if I'm just like emotional all the time, but when you're like in an argument with someone and you're trying not to cry, like for some reason when I'm in arguments with people, I always end up crying and then it's like a bad situation for everybody. But, um, so like, there's like that feeling of like, I feel like I'm going to cry, but I'm in front of my peers who like, though are like my best friends and family, like I'm still like, don't cry in front of them. Like, you know, just trying to keep it all together and as stable as possible. (laughs) Right. And like, while it is the most unprofessional environment because we are the silliest, goofiest people I've ever met. But at the same time, it's still like, okay, like you're here to do this. Like that's the main goal. So like, um, getting like really hot, feeling like you're going to cry and then eventually crying. Right. Like my right hand only will like start shaking a lot. Um, and like, oh, like the whole room like starts spinning and it feels like it's closing in on you. That's like the worst part. Cause then you get like super dizzy for no reason. Um, I remember just like running out of the room and being like, I can't like, I didn't want to be there cause I felt like trapped. Um, and then our vocal coach just chasing me down the hallway and me being like, no. <laughs> of course, Allison was right behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like, um it's it's scary it's so scary and I think it's one of those things where like with time you learn how to deal with it and how to stop it earlier on and like that's not to say that like it's just something that you have to live with like obviously there are things you can do like you can go to therapy they can give you suggestions you can go see a doctor you can get anxiety meds you can like do all these different things that can help you and like we can't tell you to go do that But I definitely recommend at least, like, at least talking to, like, some of your good friends about it if you have those experiences. Because, like, talking, just, like, talking about it makes it, like, easier. Because then, like, if that other person has gone through that and they can make that connection, then you can be like, oh, like, that's not just me. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with you for being anxious or for having panic attacks or like being depressed like that that happens to everybody at some point I think it's almost rare to meet somebody that doesn't have some mental shit going on at some point I don't think I've ever met anyone who is just like yeah my entire life I've been perfectly fine (laughs) like it's just not (laughs) something that's like feasibly possible as a human being and I think I 100% agree with you. This is something that I've just, like, told so many people, is even if you think that, like, oh, no one is really going to care, no one's going to understand what I'm going through, and I know sometimes it can be really, it can be so incredibly difficult to even just bring up what's going on with someone you know, but the moment that you do is when you're going to realize how much people actually give a shit about you and how you're doing. Because here's the thing, too, is people cannot help you and cannot try to be there for you if they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's so true. It'll it'll surprise you, I think, as soon as you mention to someone just even, hey, I'm not doing too good. Can we just, like, talk or hang out for a bit? How much people will actually be like, oh, yeah, no, for real. Like, what do you need? Like, I'm here for you. Do you want to talk? Do you want to go, like, do something fun? Like dude, I got your back. Because that's what friends are for, man. Honestly, yeah. Like, I, um, during that same rehearsal, like, when I went back into the room after, like, 10, 15 minutes, because that's how long, like, uh, usual, like, the shortest a panic attack can be is, like, 10 minutes. Um, and I've had, dude, my first panic attack lasted for three hours, because I didn't know what was going on. So, oh my God, that's a story. I'll get into that in a second. Okay. But um, <laughs> that's actually, it's, it's a good story. I'm looking back, I'm like, oh, Claire, you should have handled that differently. But like, well, that's um, the thing is, after time, I feel like you've come up with more of your own like personal strategies to deal with it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I like, I'll never forget going back into that room and having everybody just be like, like Casey, our piano player, who'll be a guest at some point on here. Oh yeah. She like gave me a huge hug and she was like, are you okay? Like what's going on? Like, if you want to talk about it, like I'm here for you. And I was like, dude, like that means so much to me. And like, 
dude as soon as you left the room we were all just like shit like is she like we were all just like what do you think happened like is she okay like we were genuinely really concerned right right I one of the one of the things that I regret about that night is I noticed beforehand I was like oh Claire seems like maybe like a little bit quiet like I noticed you were kind of shaky and I wish that I would have said something to you earlier because I was like could tell that something was going on I just wasn't sure you know how to approach it really well I mean that's the thing is like you can never really be sure like it's it's such a matter of like okay are they like upset or are they just like really tired like sometimes like when I'm really tired I'll just like shut down but when I'm also like on the verge of a panic attack or mental breakdown like I just like I just get super quiet and I'm just like don't make eye contact with me or I will break down crying right now like that's oh sorry I should silence my phone very professional. So sorry. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. This happened last time, too. I feel like oh it happens every time. <laughs> it, yeah, it's just a uh, so anyway, situation. What you're saying? Yeah, but um, I think learning that, like, learning who is there for you in those moments is huge, right? Oh, yeah. And, like, you're, like, don't... Hmm. How do I want to phrase this? Like, some people um, themselves aren't in the right mindset or frame of mind to be helping somebody else with their mental issues, right? So, like, always, like, before asking somebody for help or, like, talking to them, be like, are you in the right mindset to, like, take this on right now? Because I don't want to stress you out more, but, like, I'd also love to talk to you about this. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really good point that not too many people would really consider, you know, so yeah, it up. yeah, and like, um, yeah, I just remember like that night getting home and like everybody separately texting me and just being like, dude, are you okay? Like what, like what happened? And I was just like, oh my God, like all of these people, like they're not just people that I met by chance, like there's definitely a reason why they're in my life and they've become family and like we're all a little family now and it's great and I love it. We Maybe literally we like have, this is really off topic, but what if we had a shakeout podcast episode with everyone <gasps> everyone in shakeout? That would be so chaotic. <laughs> yes. Maybe it could be like a bonus episode, you know? Because it wouldn't oh be gosh, professional. Yes. Enough. It wouldn't be up to our standards to be a regular episode. <laughs> yeah, because we're so professional here. Um, but maybe on the 10th episode. Ten. Ooh, okay, I like that. Maybe, maybe like yeah, a little we'll surprise. I'm sure Who everyone knows? We just have to get everybody on the same schedule. There's going to be one person that's like, I can't do that day. We'd be like, oh my god. Like, we're going to have someone like on their phone in the car from like this angle. <laughs> literally. It's probably going to be me. No. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, back on topic. But, but um, going back to the three-hour panic attack story, which is, I, I'll shorten it because I'm not going to take literally three hours to walk you through every part of it. But, like... Um, We're going to get a full-length dramatic reenactment. Yeah. Yeah, a um, documentary about this process. Okay, anyway. Mic me up, baby. Like, I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, so my freshman year, which was last year, uh, cause Mira's older than me, um, is I, it was like September, it was like early in the school year. So like, I'm a little baby freshman. I only know my friends from like middle school and, and Mira and like some other random people that I happen to know that go there. And I was sitting at lunch with an old friend of mine and like her friend group and um we're not friends anymore but um and this wasn't the reason that like we're not friends but um one of her friends he asked me to homecoming and i was like oh and i was like dude like in my head i was like i don't like you like that like i don't like, like, 
And if he had just been like, hey, like, let's just go as a group as friends, I would have felt like, hell yeah, I'll go as a group. But like, because he was just like, hey, do you want to go to homecoming with me? I was like, um, and literally, I, I'm not going to expose myself here, but I also am. My go-to excuse is always, oh, I've got shakeout that day. Like, and, and sometimes we might have to edit that out in case I'm exposing my secrets oh. here. But, um, like, huh, all those times Claire told me you know, <laughs> you know, you have a rehearsal on Tuesday nights? No, I and sometimes I do actually. Um, right. But like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I have like an extra rehearsal that night, and he was like, oh, can I see it on your calendar? And I was like, dude. Huh? And I was what? like, I'm, I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I was like, um, why do they pronounce that like that? Okay. Um, like sure. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I was like, um, no. And he was like, come on, just let me see. So like, a weird thing to ask. Just like right? immediately, like, uh, I don't know, just immediately being like, oh yeah, she's bullshitting. <laughs> right. And I was like, okay, um, maybe she has a good reason to not want to go with you. Literally. So I like, I like whipped out my phone and I like put it in a calendar thing and I like put it in right away. And I was like, yeah, see, like I got shakeout that night. I'm booked my guy. And, um, and I should have, I, I should have, and I could have handled it differently and just been like, Hey man, like I like, I'm already going with somebody else. Like I was going with Mira and her friends. Yeah. Um, I got a date. Yeah. Well, yeah, I could have just been like, dude, I'm sorry, I already have a date. Like, I'm booked, sweetheart. Like, <laughs> hot commodity over here. Um, no, I'm very lonely. I, um, <laughs> sorry, sounds so sad. I'm not, I'm thriving. I'm vibing <laughs> by myself right now. Um, but I, like, I remember seeing two of my friends um, sitting, like, two lockers down from me. And I, because it was, like, at lunch, and I just, I texted one of them and I was like, please come over here and like, just say that like, you're like, you need help with Spanish or something. Like, just help me get out of here right now. And bless her soul, she like came over and she's like, hey, do you want to like work on our project now or do you want to do it tomorrow? And I was like, oh, we can do it now. And so, and she like, we walked up the stairs and to a bathroom and I, uh, walked into the bathroom and she was like what's going on like are you okay I just like broke down I was so hot and I like I had like a crew neck sweatshirt on but like I only have like a bra underneath but I was like so hot and I was in the bathroom anyway so I just like took off my sweatshirt because I was like freaking out I was like why am I so hot why am I like crying why is this freaking me out and like and I was like shaking my entire like and that's the thing is like my entire body is like frozen still except for my right hand and it's just like shaking mm. like like crazy and I was like what is like what is going on so I like and again like room is spinning walls closing in on me and I'm like holy shit like am I dying like it literally like it I literally can't imagine scary feels well and it's like I'm at school and I still have three more hours to go like <laughs> Um, I and so texted you outside of school or something, <laughs> dude. I I was like, what's going on? So I I was like, dude, I'm not okay. I don't know what's going on, but like, got my sweatshirt back on. I like wiped the tears a little bit, and we like went out in the hallway. And I sat down, and she's like, okay, like try to eat something because like you're probably hungry and stuff. And so we're like sitting there, and I'm like still crying, and I'm like shaking, and I'm like curled up in a ball in a corner. And this guy from my marketing class, he, like, stops. And I've always thought that he was, like, the biggest asshole. But he comes over to me, and he's like, hey, are you okay? And I was like, huh? And I was like, I was like, I was like, dude, if I'm being honest, like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, like, I'm, like, crying. I'm shaking. I'm so hot. I feel like the room is spinning and closing in on me. I'm like, I told him what happened. And he was like, that kind of sounds like a panic attack. And I was like, huh? I was like, I was like a what? Oh. I was like, oh, a what now? And so, um, and he, like, and this is the craziest part, is like, we exchanged snaps, like we were talking about it the rest of the day, 
we didn't talk for the rest of the year in class, but we would like make eye contact sometimes and just kind of be like, um, and like that was a moment where like he could have just walked by, but like for him to be like, I think that was a panic attack. And then me sitting in my Spanish class afterwards doing like research about this while I should have been paying attention. I was like, I was so like, I went to Spanish, like I had like 10 minutes left in the lunch hour. So I just like went to Spanish and I was like sitting at my desk and I was like, okay, I need to like control myself because people are going to see you and be like, huh? Like, wh why are you crying? Um, I'm sitting in Spanish. I've like kind of controlled myself, but it's like also very obvious that I've been crying. Like, you know, that post cry glow. Yeah. Um, I, would, I don't know if I would call it a glow, but <laughs> it's really not. It's like a red, um, Puppy face, red eyes. Situation. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I, I like, was sitting in Spanish and I was like, okay, like, you're fine. It's fine. You're fine. And my, my friend who I've known since I was six years old, and she's one of my best friends in the entire world, her name's Zoe. I'll try to have her on here at some point. She texts me and she's like, hey, are you okay? Like, you don't, like, you don't look okay. And I just, like, started crying again. So, like, I take the hall pass, I go to the bathroom, and I'm just, like, standing at the sinks, and I'm, like, what the hell is going on? I'm, like, texting different people. I'm, like, do you know what this is? And I get a text from my old friend will give me a goofy random name for her. Um, McSchnoozle. McSchnoozle? McSchnoozle. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, you McSch random. What do you want from me? Okay, okay. So, uh, <laughs> my friend, my old friend, not friends anymore, McSchnoozle, she texts me and she's like, I knew he was going to ask you, but I didn't say anything because I didn't know how you were going to react. And I was like... Mm -hmm. I was like, you knew that... Like, she knew that I didn't have feelings for him, right? She knew that, like, that would probably make me uncomfortable because, like, we had been, like, childhood friends. And so I was like, okay, that's, like, annoying, right? And like, I could understand uh, her not wanting to say anything if she thought that you might have actually been into him, you know? And right. wanted it to be, like, oh, like, a surprise or whatever. But if she knew that you didn't like him... Then I see no reason for her not to give you like a heads up, you know. I mean, maybe she just didn't think about it, but. Well, and I was like, like, in that moment, I was like, like, what the hell? Like, you, like, she knew that I liked somebody else because we were besties at that point. Um, and I, I was like, dude, like, you know that I like this other guy. Like, why? why wouldn't you give me a heads up? Like, like that, like, I feel like that entire situation could have been prevented if I'd had time to think about an answer and just be like, hey man, like, I'm really sorry, I'm already going with somebody else. Like, that would have been so simple and it wouldn't have been awkward. Like, um. Because him putting it on the spot too is probably what made it so stressful in the first place. Well, like, because he puts me on the spot, we're in a crowded hallway, our lunch group is like eight plus people. So I'm sitting in front of everybody, everybody's staring at me, oh, and they're man. all, like, expecting an answer, and then, oh my god, what makes it worse, here's a great example of, like, I did not say no directly, however, my answer implies a no, but thanks, like, I was like, hey, I, like, I've got plans, like, sorry, um, and he's not an invitation to keep trying to ask. <laughs> If you get a no, it's not always going to be a, hey, no. no. Take the hint, um, man. Take the hints. So he keeps texting me throughout the day, and he's like, hey, so just, oh, my God, I got home. It was, like, 4.30. I'd, like, just gotten home, and I was sitting down in my basement, like, watching a show, trying to get my mind off of it. And mm -hmm. he texts me, and he's like, hey, just to clarify, we're going together, right? And I was like, what about my answer made you think that? I was like, what about me leaving? You literally <laughs> said that you had plans and showed him your calendar after he asked to see it and he literally. thought y'all were still going together. I was like, okay, sweetheart. It's not like, even a just... hint at that point. Just figure it out, my guy. <laughs> right, that's just like a, that's just like a, hey, man, like, 
no and then he oh my god listen next time yeah um message to literally everybody listen like (laughs) sometimes the best thing you can do is listen and then think about what that other person has said and then actually think about it but um so this guy like keeps texting me throughout the night and i'm like hey man like i said like i said no like stop asking me and he was like well to be fair you did leave and I said yeah man because I had a panic After attack saying no yeah I was like I said no started to have a panic attack which freaked me out because I've never had one before and like I'm off with a friend who like bless her heart helped me through the entire thing and then brought one of her other friends that she was close with to come help too because she had experienced it before now I'm great friends with both of them. Like, so I gained a friend, which is great. Um, we love, we love friends. Um, the show, it's great. Um, but did you not get my friends reference? <laughs> that was such a delayed laugh. No, I, I got it after, I got it after you said friends of the show. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. After you okay. made it completely off. <laughs> The Friends fans out there, my friend Ellie is going to crack up at that part if she watches this. She probably won't. That's fine. But if you are, hi. I love you. Hope you're having a great day. Um, but, <laughs> Give her a little shout out. Um, but I think, like, it's so tricky. And so, yeah, that lasted for, like, three hours. And I was, I remember getting on the bus because I normally take the, like, city bus to school and back. And I texted my mom and I was like, can you pick me up? And she's like, yeah, sure. And so like, I literally like already had swiped my card, but I like walked off the bus. Like I made them open the doors. I was like, open the doors right now. I'm getting off this bus. I was like, I was like, I'm about to cry. And if you don't open the doors, I will break down in front of you right now. Cry on the bus. Um, not the first time. Let's be honest here. Um, we've all, you can not tell me. on the bus. You cannot tell me that you haven't cried on the bus at least once in your lifetime. <laughs> Nobody out there is sitting there and being like, I've never done that. You've all done it. And or at least, done been it, on the ver- at least been on the verge of tears and then like gotten off the bus and started crying. <laughs> One of the two. If, if, if you say you haven't, you're lying to yourself. It's, there's... The bus can be a dark place. <laughs> Oh my god, because you're just listening to music and you're like, shit, my life sucks, my guy. You're like, um, but, um. The lesson is don't get too contemplative on the bus. That's, don't listen to sad music. Not that's the time and place. I'm going to say. Not the time and place. If you've had a bad day, don't listen to sad music. I should take my own advice. Please don't take the bus. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, I could have walked. I mean, it would have taken a while, but I could have walked home. Didn't do that. Probably a good idea. I probably would have gotten hit Getting by a right car. Your mom was probably a good good call. Probably, yeah. I'd say that was yeah. a smart move on my behalf. Um, but yeah, so like, sure. when I got home, like I started doing research on it, and I was like, "Huh, that sounds like possibly that could be the issue." And then um, I had this thing where like. Um, a while ago where I had, I think it's emotophobia or it's emotophobia. It's one of the two. It looks like emotophobia, but it's probably not. And it's like the fear of getting like sick or like throwing up or like seeing somebody else throw up. Like it's like a, like, um, and obviously like everybody thinks that's gross, but like for some reason I was just like terrified of it. And then like, I kind of grew out of that, which is like really good for me, I guess, Um, but I was, like, really terrified of that, and somebody that was very close to me at one point um, over quarantine was telling me this story, and he was, like, going into, like, too much detail about, like, this time that he got, like, really sick on a roller coaster, and as somebody who hates theme parks and hates roller coasters, I think we touched on that in the last episode, um, I think you've mentioned it before, actually. Just so. in general, I, I hate theme parks. I hate roller coasters. I hate water parks. It's not even a germ thing. I just don't think they're fun. Anyway, 
so he's like telling me the story and like he's telling me the story and i've told him before because like we were really close i told him before that like that was something that like terrified me and that like i would like freak out if somebody was like talking about it or like if like something happened Mm -hmm. And I, like, kept telling him to, like, stop telling the story. I was like, dude, like, stop. Like, stop telling that story. Like, I don't want to hear about it. And he just, like, kept going. And, like, I don't know if he didn't hear me or, like, if, like, he just didn't really put that together. But then I literally, like... Yeah, or maybe he was... Maybe he thought you were kind of, like, saying it in a joking way, you know, like, oh, dude, come think, on, stop. I think, yeah. And, you like, know? I... But I, if you had talked to him previously... You think yeah, that's the thing that, like, kind of, like, concerned me, because I was, like, I've told you about this before, and so I, I hung up the phone and proceeded to, like, have a panic attack about it, because I was, like, that freaked out about it, and, like, again, like, that's not really something that bothers me anymore, like, obviously, that's still gross, but, like, it doesn't really bother me anymore, like, to that extent, so, like, I'm, like, having a panic attack literally, like, right over there by my door, and I'm, like, freaking out. He's, like, calling me and texting me. And I'm, like, dude, just, like, I text him. I'm, like, stop calling me. Give me, like, an hour. I proceed to, like. Once again, this is a situation in which someone did not take stop or no seriously. Literally. <laughs> and it just escalated. So, like, I, I'm, like, freaking out, right? And I, like, finally get to a point where I calm myself down. And I just text him. And I. I didn't call him back, but I texted him, and I was like, dude, I, like, drafted in my notes, because I'm that girl. I was like, um, I don't want to be typing for too long. I didn't want, um. No, 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 so I feel that. I, I feel that. Like, I, like, copy and paste this message into my notes. I'm just like, hey, like, I told you that that bothers me, and, like, you just caused me, because of that story, to have a panic attack, and that really sucks. Like, please, in the future, don't do that and he was like oh like I'm really sorry like I forgot and I was like okay that's like a pretty key detail that you should probably remember especially going into (laughs) um going into a friendship with somebody um I Mm -hmm. will cut out that um I no we won't who am I kidding I'm not gonna edit this um you were just trying to find more but I, it's, it's, uh, I, don't even get me started on how, don't, never mind. I, um. Anyways. Anyway, this is what the people want to see, um, is me being stupid. Um, I, so, like, I was like, hey, like, don't do that. And, like, he did not, to be fair to him, he did not bring it up ever again. Um, actually, he did, he did one time, but, like, I had grown out of it already, and it was fine. But, like, still, like questionable um but um and then um I think over the course of 2020 I had at least one or two panic attacks per month besides the past four months my last was in September so it's been a while but like in that span of those months like there were quite a lot of them And, like, I kept thinking, like, okay, like, it's fine. It's not, like, like, I knew that, like, other people had panic attacks. But I was, like, how bad is it to the point where, like, I can't control them? Like, I can't, like, even calm myself down. So then, like, I started doing a ton of research. And I kept, like, I would, like, write stuff down. Like, anybody who's listening that knows me knows that, like, I'm, like, constantly, like, putting together cute notebooks. I literally have notes for this podcast written out in my notebook. I'm a, She's got a I'm notebook for every aspect gal. of her life. It's quite I impressive. really do. I love a good pen. Oh, my God. Oh, that I could love, be a whole other episode. Color. I love color coding. Man, literally. <laughs> um, but I was just like, okay. And, like, I, I had talked to him about, like, panic attacks in general. And I was like, hey, like, here's, like, he knew my phone password. So I was like, I have this section for you in my notes. If I start to have a panic attack, go to my notes, look at this section, has your name on it. And like, if we're ever together and it happens, go in there and it will literally step by step tell you what to do to like help calm me down. Oh, wow. Um, Which took a lot of like effort on my behalf because I had to like think about like what would work and like I had to do a lot of testing on myself. Um, Yeah, man. But um, 
Uh, he never used it, but um, that's Did he have the opportunity fine. to, or did he just not? Yes, yes. Um, Once again, y'all, listen. Um, listen to um, your people. If you give a shit about them, then listen to what they're saying to you, and take it to heart. Yes, try to be a good that's friend true. Okay. Um, and, like, oh, another thing, too, is um, there's... I've had some people in my life say, like, oh, are you really, like, anxious or are you just, like, nervous about something? And I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely like, not, dude, if someone's going through it and you are, like, trying to question the validity of experiencing, why would you think that's going to help them in that situation, you know? Mm-hmm. If you, like... Being like, oh, are you sure that you're actually feeling blah, 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 blah. It's just going to make that person feel worse about whatever they're going through. <laughs> That's like if you're in an argument with someone and you can tell that they're super angry and you're like, oh, are you getting angry? Like, that is the same thing as being it's like... It's not productive. It's no. not accomplishing anything. <laughs> no, not at all. And it's like the same, it's like, like the same thing as saying like oh, well, do you really have anxiety or do you just have, like, little things that make you nervous? Like, everybody, like, it's not like, oh, I'm nervous to do this school presentation. It's like, no, I'm anxious literally every day, every point of my life because of these things that make me tick, but then also, like, other things that make it worse on top of that. So, like, for someone to be, like, it's really just like disregarding those feelings and like not taking it seriously. Cause like anxiety is super scary. It's so scary. And like, um, it's, it's one of those things where like you like, and oh my gosh, like, um, medication for anxiety is also really scary cause it has side effects and it has like other things that like could potentially actually make it worse and sometimes to make it like fix itself you have to go on like a really high dosage and that's not safe so it's like you can tell that I'm very passionate about this because I'm getting like worked up about it but it's like (laughs) like, yeah I could tell this this episode is taking a bit more of a serious tone yeah yeah I think it's appropriate we'll we'll add like a we can add like a trigger trauma warning in the description because I don't want anybody to watch this if this is going to like bother them but um like for it's it's like kind of the same thing as like if somebody's crying and you're like you can't be sad like stop crying like and that's where like Mm -hmm. we could go into a whole separate episode on depression but like um to just touch on it. But it's like the like, same thing. If someone is someone is saying, hey, I'm feeling really depressed, and you're like, are you sure you're depressed, or are you just, like, sad right now? It's, oh why God. would, also, why is that your first thought, is to be, like, like, I feel like as a friend or someone that that person is, if they're already opening up to you about this shit, and your first thought is to be, like, oh, I don't believe you, or I don't think that what you're going through is actually this, then I think you need to take a serious look at yourself and what your oh, yeah. motivations are because that's dude, that's that's kind of crazy <laughs> dude I'm not even kidding like the yeah like if that's your first reaction like I remember oh god it was like a month ago and like to be honest like I was just like really depressed and like I'm less like everybody's like a little depressed at some points I think but um it was just like really hitting me hard on this one particular day for no reason. And I couldn't figure out a reason. And I remember texting Mira and being like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And she was like, dude, like, I love you so much. Like, what can I do to help you? I'm literally going to cry. I I can't cry in the podcast this early into the series. I, um, um, (laughs) But I, like, I remember getting that text from her and being like, if literally nobody else in the world cares about me, Mira cares about me. And, like, that was, like, enough to keep that, like, to keep me going so that I could, like, figure that out and get better. Do it. I'm really going to be so good. I'm going to start 
start crying. Shit. It's too early. It's too early in the series. One episode two. Okay. Look, I had to. <laughs> this is not good for me. I just, I don't know. I just my dude. My first reaction to that situation is to just be like. Even if I don't know exactly what to say or do to like fix this or make it better, I'm gonna at least let that person know that holy, holy shit, I give a shit about you and I care about what you're going through. Even if I don't have like a solution, I don't have something to say or do that's gonna make you feel immediately better, I need you to know that I'm at least, I'm here. I can listen to you, I can be there for you, I have your back. Um, that's like such a huge thing. Oh my god, I'm literally. <laughs> I'm trying to cover my emotions with comedy and it's not working. I <laughs> okay, this episode is about feeling things. We're allowed That's to so true. on the podcast. Um and like to it's get It's okay to cry. It's okay um, to cry in whatever situation you feel you need to. Crying's healthy. Yeah. Um I there was this particular night and I wanna say that it was like the week before I texted you about this, but um I was having a pretty great day, and then um, we had, like, a shakeout rehearsal. It was a great rehearsal. We were all having a great time, and I, um, Mira and her boyfriend and said friend of mine, and I all carpooled together, and I got in the car, and I, like, was, like, all right, and then we got into my driveway, and for some reason, like, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I just, like, broke down crying and we were talking in the car for like an hour and a half like we were we were in your driveway for like forever <laughs> oh my gosh yeah and I like this is where we needed to be and we were gonna just even, kick you out of the car and be like go home Claire <laughs> just go home my friends would we be for that <laughs> oh my god um you can be like literally you're right by the door you can be like um but I I remember just, like, sitting in the back of the car and just, like, breaking down crying and, like, not even, like, panic attack, like, no anxiety with it. It was just, like, a moment of, like, dude, like, I think I'm depressed. Like, because I was just, like, I felt like I wasn't, like, doing anything with my life almost, if that makes sense, even though, like, even though one of my songs just hit a hundred streams on SoundCloud the other day. And I was like, Oh yeah. And, like, did. Go stream like, drowning. <laughs> one of like and I had released my album I'm like the two weeks one. before. Thank you. I had released the album um Dangerous like two weeks before. It was getting like great reviews. It was getting a lot of streams. Like I knew that like for some reason people wanted to hear me sing about what I was feeling but I like I still felt like I just didn't matter in a sense I guess and like and I was like stressed out like my grades were really low because I just like my mental health just like was going super downhill so like I wasn't doing homework and I just like I was like it doesn't like it doesn't matter I'll get caught up and like now I've been kind of catching up, but, like, my grades aren't the best, obviously, because, like, I was not doing work for two whole weeks, like, mm -hmm. but, and I, like, another thing is if you're comfortable with it, reach out to teachers, like, not all of them it, are going to be, such a difference. not all of them are going to be angels about it, but I text, not texted, we're not that tight, <laughs> I emailed my history teacher, and I was, like, dude, I'm so sorry. I know I have all this work missing. My mental health has been terrible the past, like, month. I'm not doing okay. Like, I'll get the work done. I'm working on it right now. And she was, like, she emailed me back and she said, I just gave you full credit for all of the assignments. And I was, like, dude. Like, and then we were, like, emailing back and forth and she was, like, do your parents know? Like, are you getting help? Like, are you talking to your friends about it? Like, I want to be there for you if you, like, need help. Like, do you want me to set up a Zoom with you? We can talk about it. And I was like, dude, like, that's the kind of teacher where it's just, like, every teacher should be like that. And some yeah, of them I feel are, like that's I, not super common, but that is... Oh, no. 
Yeah. No, a, no. a lot of your teachers probably, like, I think that's an outlier situation in which a lot of your teachers probably wouldn't be that generous and that, like, kind and caring. But at the, at the bare minimum, reaching out to your teachers at least shows them that you care and right. would probably in the future make it more likely for them to be, you know, perhaps more lenient or more like, oh, I remember this kid emailing me. They actually care about the class and what I'm teaching them. So no matter what, nothing bad can come from you reaching out to your teachers. Right. And, and I be, like, I, I emailed, um, I emailed my chemistry teacher. I almost called her by her name and I was like, I can't call her out like that. <laughs> um, and I, I emailed her and I was like, I basically said the exact same thing. And I got a response from her and I had gotten this response before I'd gotten the response from my history teacher and all the email said was and I'll never forget this is I don't know what to tell you just get your work in and I was like bitch stop it and I was like that is not what I need to hear right now you know what I need to hear right now? The support from my history teacher. Like, mm -hmm. and then my history. And that's just a very unsympathetic response, man. And she has. She I has feel like some teachers just don't people. understand how much more difficult things are for us right now. You know, like they Honestly. have no grasp over Honestly. how it feels to be. You know, if you're already going through shit mentally, and then being stuck at home and having to do all your work online, it's just gonna mm -hmm. seriously amplify that for some, oh some people. God. And some people just don't need that. It's like one of those situations where like, I was literally, for those like two weeks where I wasn't getting any work done, I would like lay on my bed and log into Zooms and just keep my camera off and just like literally just lay on my bed doing nothing but staring at the ceiling, like not listening. I was just like looking at the ceiling being like, Wow, that ceiling looks so ceiling-y. Like, I, and it's just like, <laughs> mesmerized by my fan, you know? Um, and it's just like, the teachers, there are teachers that are going to be like, hey, like, let me help you if you want help. And there are going to be teachers that are like, screw you, figure it out. And that's- You never know until you ask. Yeah, that's the thing, too. It's, like, and sometimes you know. Like, my history teacher is, like, one of the nicest people I've ever met. And she's, like, she would not hurt a fly. She's, like, like, in class, she's always, like, I'm never going to call on you if you don't have your hand raised. Like, I'm not going to put you on blast like that. And I'm, like, dude, thank you. Because you know how, like, I, oh, my God. I think this was the peak of my anxiety last year is I would get, so my algebra honors teacher, big mistake taking algebra to honors. I'm not good at math. Um, I would get in that class and this teacher, he's known for being like really scary. And if you go to West, you know who this is, but he. You can probably but, shout him out. You can oh, yeah. shout him out. Because everyone knows this motherfucker. <laughs> That's true. Honestly, they do. So um, my teacher, we call him Reiko, and he um, he had this, like, random number generator. And if you're, like, he would have, like, warm-up problems on the board or, like, random problems on the board. And if you got your number picked, you had to go up and do it. Like, and if you didn't know the answer, you couldn't just say, I don't know. And, like, you'd be like, uh, like, okay so you'd be forced to like figure it out in front of like 18 other people and you'd be like and it's like embarrassing right because like if you don't know how to yeah. solve it and like and you like, should at least be allowed you, a, if he's gonna do that you should at least be allowed a pass if you don't know so you don't go yeah. up there and you're just like clueless and like panicking trying to figure out this problem so like i would literally get in class every day and i shit you not would like and I'm not really religious I'd like say a prayer every time I got in my class I'd be like don't call on me today Rico don't do me like that don't do it <laughs> no please like help help your girl out like and I I remember sometimes I'd like send him an email about it and he would just respond with no period wake out send and I'd be like what that doesn't even answer my question I feel like the, the, sounds like um, him though um and and sometimes it wouldn't even be a question, it would just be a statement, and he'd just respond, no, right, go. I'd be like, well, okay. So I, like, so I'd get in that class, 
kid you not, say a prayer every time I got in that classroom. And I'd be like, oh my God, don't call me. Head, like, head kind of like down, like, please don't make eye contact with me, you're scary. Like, and I was like a shy, like, last year I was way more shy than I am now. And so, like, I'm like this shy little bean, and I'm like, don't look at me, don't call on me, don't yell at me, don't make me hide in the corner and do my work. I'm literally just like, please don't look at me. And of course, I'd always be like front row, which is actually really great because like the number one would like never get called. And I was sitting in the one chair for like a really long time. Um, I Um, think maybe, I think maybe he was secretly helping me out, but he didn't want to admit it, but I'm not sure. Um, But like, I remember that class was just like so, and like my, like one of my best friends, Zoe, who I mentioned earlier, she left the class. She was like, dude, bye, too much stress, like no way. And, like, I, shit you not, I was the most, I had the lowest grade in that class out of all my classes. I had, like, a low C. But I got my best final grade on it. And I was, like, what? I was, like, how is that even possible? Um, but I I was pretty excited. I was, like, wow, pulled that out of my ass. Like, I don't know where that came from, but I just remembered all these formulas. Um, but it's, like, learning to like ask for help if like and like we can't tell you to do that like it's it's scary and I didn't like I've been anxious my entire life and I've just now but started asking people for help and like telling my friends about it I didn't even ask for help I didn't even reach out to anyone when I was going through it it took my friends and family figuring out like what was up to like I had to be confronted by other people that's how much I just didn't want to talk to anyone about it but as soon as that happened, I was like, holy shit, how come I didn't bring this up sooner, you know? Because right. I feel like a lot of times when you're in a really bad state of mind, you tend to, like, self-isolate. At least that's how it was for me. Like, I had, I had this mindset where I was like, I don't think that people actually give a shit about me. So because of that, I didn't spend as much time with the people in my life. And that just, you know every everything spirals further and because I wasn't spending time with people I just kept thinking that oh these people don't give a shit about me it was just anyways going into a dark place but as soon as people figured out what was going on I was like holy shit why didn't you talk to us about us like we want to help you and I started spending more time with those people who did confront me about it it completely changed my perspective and like you know when my parents found out what was going on they were like okay we're gonna put you in therapy which at first I was like yikes man talking to you talking to a random adult about my shit what and at that point too it was sort of like my friends had already known at this point my parents found out later on so I was like kind of I was getting better and I was feeling like I had a handle on things so I was like right I don't know if I really need to go into therapy but what I didn't realize was after going through that going through um therapy I was given by my therapist strategies to continue staying in a good place. Like, I was already in a pretty solid place, but talking to my therapist about all the shit that went down helped me figure out how to stay there and how to keep getting better, you know? So I am really grateful for my parents (laughs) making me go to therapy, as weird as that sounds. Right, right. Well, and I, like, as, like, kind of a closing thought, because this podcast is going to end up being an hour um and that's exactly what we didn't really want but whatever yeah, I want to edit um, it down but I also feel like I want to cut out a lot of the shit that we talked about so I guess it's like all important you know if you made it to this point I am impressed thank you for being a true fan if you, love you. thank it, you that's also sick because damn I don't want to hear myself talk for an hour so I don't blame you you think you think I'm gonna sit here and listen back to all this and make sure I didn't like name drop girl, anybody absolutely I got time for that girl if I name dropped you I'm sorry just shoot me a text and be like hey don't do that again and I'll be just like all right man. Out with a really annoying just like, um it'll be me saying it too it'll be like Meh. it'll just be like um yeah um yeah, um I so like as like a closing <laughs> closing statement God. wrapping it up as, like, with a nice as, little like, bow. closing yeah a little bow is yes talk to your friends and family they are not licensed professionals though mm-hmm. 
they can give you all of the advice that they have and it's still possible that it won't work for you because everybody like everybody's mental health situation is completely different and unique to them so it like depends on like what's going on in your head right so like an actual licensed professional therapist or doctor like can tell you like can be like oh i think you should go on to this medication because of these things that you said whereas like your friend is going to be like oh man like that sucks like i'm really sorry and while that compassion is great and it's so needed and necessary like this is not me saying don't talk to your friends and family about it talk to your friends and family about Mm it talk to them first and then get extended help if you feel like you want and need it um it's not like and of course lean on the people that you love the most it's also not fair to put all of that on them especially if like they're having like a super great day and then you give them all of this shit from your mind and they're just like oh dude like now i'm really worried about you and i can't like like and if they don't know if your parents know they can't like talk to your parents about it like um so it's those kind of things where like you like yes lean on those people but absolutely if you feel like you're going to benefit from it please please reach out and try to get like a therapist or go to a doctor and that's also like nothing's wrong with you like that's like they're not going to like fix you there's nothing to be fixed but they are going to help you understand yourself a lot more but that's my closing statement closing statements from you i think you wrapped it up pretty nicely i don't know i think i've got out everything that i want to say moral of the story i think we brought up a lot was talk to people and listen to people all right Yes. Good communication can make any relationship better. <laughs> For real. For real. Seek and that's... Help. Seek help from your friends. Because people care about you. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you think that you are just absolutely alone. Not the case. There are people, there are even strangers that will give a shit about you. Right? For real. We, For real. Together. we might as well make it a better place if we can honestly what a great way to wrap that up all right this has been episode two of mic check so thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time one last thing tune in next week for not only me and claire but a special guest special guest coming this next week very exciting all right this has been mic check bye guys